possibilities are truly endless when it comes to playing with paper and today I've got a project that's both beautiful and fun. I'm making large envelope pouches in an art deco style. It's big, it's super satisfying and it's actually a lot easier than it looks. The papers and images that I'm using today to decorate this large envelope pouch are from my friend Barbara here on YouTube, 49 Dragonflies, but I'm taking those images and those papers and I'm embellishing them, so I'm having a go at making them feel more like my own. I'm using book pages within the base and I'm sewing around the outside. Lots of different papers will work for this today, so have a look at what you've got and maybe use what you have. It's quite a sturdy envelope pouch, so it would be great for housing perhaps some of your little pieces of ephemera. You could sell one in your Etsy shop, you could gift one, that would be quite generous, or you could just keep it for yourself. I've painted on the back of this one today using beautiful shades of teal and green that go with the image on the front. Hello, it's Joey making large envelope pouches in an Art Deco style. I have a few different supplies that I'm using today to make this rather large envelope pouch so I thought I'd just very quickly talk through the component parts. Maybe you want to get those out and craft along with me. I'm using a couple of pages from my large Purnell's Concise Encyclopedia of Geography and this is one that you've seen a few times recently if you've watched my videos. So lovely large pages in that that are going to help with the base of the envelope pouch. So the sturdiness of this really does come from a large book page to begin with. And as well as that, I'm going to use something more white and lightweight paper. This is just to stop you being blinded. So this is my Spanish dictionary that I'm now completely into and using in lots of different ways. So I'll show you a few of those later today. So I need a, a couple of pages of that to go on the back of the envelope pouch and other than that I'm going to add a little bit of extra embellishment. So I'm going to use a couple of pencils just to add some extra features on the front here. Some of these what I interpret as Art Deco style little extras really just a bit of fun. I've splattered with extra paint I'm using one of my Artistro paint marker pens in white, so I had a little play with something new. And of course, what I'm doing is using some very pretty images. So I'm going to use one and a half pages from Barbara's new Art Deco kit. So I'll show you a few more pages from this as we go through. Some beautiful images. I just love that gentle teal and this this it's a subtle violet probably mixed with golds and deeper greens warm gentle quite sophisticated classic art deco and on the back of my envelope pouch I'll be adding just something extra taking one of those images again into a pocket and having a play with some butterflies so as well as my watercolor paints that I will have a splosh with on the back and I'll show you how I do that. Really that's it. Have a look what supplies you've got, have a play with any images you've already got and let's have a go at making this stunning and maybe a little bit different envelope pouch. So the first thing I'm going to do is construct the front and also the large envelope flap and this is going to be sewn on and it's done in a way where you really can't see any gap, there's no little white bit where there's any book page showing. So for this we need a couple of pieces of a large book page and this paper is it's, it's a great size, it's matte, it's not too resistant to a sewing needle that I'm going to use on my sewing machine a bit later to go around. So that's really really helpful and also for some reason I just love playing with this one. So I need two pieces, take that in half and I'm going to stick my pattern paper 
onto my book pages to give me a sturdy base. So I need a decent glue. I'm going to use a relatively liquid glue and I need my images that I've already printed off. I've got a little bit organised. I think you can see already the difference between this finished image where I've had a go at extra splats and extra playtime and this one. So this is how it started. So the splats are inspired by what's already in the pattern but I've added some extra definition, a bit of oomph. So I will need to put that onto a book page with glue and then I need to do a second one which I will tear to make the flap. So let's add this one first. So I'm going to add the glue to the paper that has the image on it just so that I can see it be relatively precise about getting it to the edges although there is a little bit of a get out of jail free card on this one because we're going to sew around it so you don't need a ton of glue on the back. I am going to put my image over the brightly coloured picture that was on the book page. So I've got an image nice and flat, I've even got my bone folder to just flatten that out. This is the one that has legs. It does go walk about. So one image down, really easy. I know there's a little bit for us to trim off here and I've also got a little bit of excess at the top. Come back to that in a second. Let's get a second image down, which is what we will use to make the flap. Image number two. I'm only going to use half of this, but let's have a think where, where we want it to go. So this piece of paper will be used to stick on the top of our front sheet, of our front of our envelope pouch, and we'll see the interior. And I just think that's quite pretty too. So, thinking again which side. I don't want to see colour, so I will cover that up. And I'm going to do some of this by tearing because I want some of that texture to remain. The idea of this project is not to have something that looks, dare I say, manufactured definitely want something that looks like we've got artistic hands that have been on it and they have haven't they our artistic hands have been all over this so there we go two pieces of paper stuck onto two large book pages nothing difficult about that what I'm going to do is take my little Fiskars paper trimmer, or my large Fiskars paper trimmer I should say, and take the end off. And because we obviously want both the flap and the front to be just as wide as each other, I'm being quite careful where I trim. I'm taking off all of that extra bit of white from the book page behind, using that little wire that's on my Fiskars paper trimmer to be as precise as possible. Number one done, that wasn't too difficult. I'll try to just do pretty much the same again. The odd millimetre here and there, we won't talk about. There we are, spot on. So two trimmed pieces of paper. So what I want to do now is take one of these and turn it into the flap. So one will be the front, one will be the flap. And the flap is going to take up half of this second sheet. So let's just fold this in half to begin with and tear that down. So I'm going to have this is the front, this is the flap and I'm going to use the upper half of the image because I quite like having just a little bit of this lady character still peeping through. I've got her here, I've got her here and on the front she's obviously sitting down at the bottom left here. So make that quite a sharp crease so that I can tear down it. Let's be brave. Doing okay.
this piece I keep. This piece I'll use for something else, no doubt. Let's come up with a project for that. I want to measure three centimetres down either side of this smaller piece. So I want three centimetres down here and here, and then we're going to fold it over. So let's just measure. And I'm measuring, although I've got a little bit of extra from my book page behind, to be precise so that things line up, I'm going to measure from where the image starts, my little A4 piece of paper. And I've now got two marks where I can fold. It doesn't matter if this isn't precisely three centimetres, it's just enough so that we can have a flap that's big enough at the top of our envelope pouch, but also I would say enough surface area here so that when we glue the two pieces together there's really enough to attach to each other. Again giving it a nice squish down to give it a good creased fold. So, so far nothing difficult really. What I'm going to do is attach this to my front. So I need to make a decision as to whether to keep that rough edge. And I think what I'm going to do is tidy that off. I think it does look a little bit better with a tidier edge there. So for that I'm going to go in with my scissors and now just take off any of that excess that's just peeping out from behind my sheet that has the image on it. There are times to be tidy and there are times not. This is just one decision, rare though it is, to be on the tidy side. Front, flap. Just before I attach this I want to add my little corners. I'm going to go for angular corners. So for this I'm going to fold over and make a mark at four centimetres up, four centimetres in and they'll obviously be identical when we've cut them because we've folded this over. Let's just have a go at that. What that four centimetre point gives me is still enough of that image there but enough angle cut off that it feels like it's the flap of an envelope. And this is now ready to stick on the back of here. I want plenty of glue on the back of here. And I think what I'm going to do is actually use two types of glues because I do want things that stick today to really stay in place. I'm going to add some of that down the middle. It's on its last legs, time for a new one. Which always feels nice, doesn't it, starting new things. Let's get that. Stay away from that bit of glue on here. And still very easy. So I've got my front, turn it over, I've got my flap. So far so good, should we keep going? So it's time to make the back and in the same vein what I'm going to do is take another of those sheets from my book, another of my lovely book pages, and I'm going to add some other form of book page on top of that because I'm going to have a go at painting. Now you can add any form of decoration you like to this. I just felt like I wanted to have a play, so I had a play at decorating with colours that go with the rest of this style of image. But you don't have to do that, you could leave it blank. Because I wanted to use these green and blue teal shades, I felt that a white paper would be really, really good for acting as a backing to the paint, to those colours. I'm going to add a couple of my white Spanish book pages, so satisfying, to my larger book page. I don't know how many I need, let's just pull two or three off. A different type of paper, and I do think 
whenever we're playing with our book pages. It's just really nice to make observations about the different sorts of book page that we see. They feel different, they've got different colours, they've got different fonts, just, you know, the variety. So I want to add white Spanish dictionary to my book page. So we will get some glue on that. Just a little bit in the middle there. Glue that down. And even just the two sheets of paper as they come together give me enough strength to act as the back of this envelope pouch. There's one. Getting a bit of glue on my desk. What a mucky pup. Glue on here. And we know that we're going to have to trim this down too to the right hand side. It will be a little bit too wide. We'll need to just take a little bit off. What I want is as much text to show as possible. Can I just tidy that up? Is that is that roughly okay? What do you think? That looks okay to me. Fine. I will trim this one down so that it matches the width of my front. That cutting sound. Also a thing of beauty. So this is going to be the back. So I know for a start that it needs to be not quite as wide. And it is a project to be a little bit neat and tidy. So let's just make a decision how much is coming off so that we match up the width. Press down. But I also want the height of this, this width, to be a bit less. So I want this to be sitting, let me show you, I want this to sit so that there is a gap here between the top of the back and the fold of the flap. Let me show you on the one that's done. So I want there to be a gap between the top of the back and the fold of the flap. So you can decide how big a gap. What I'm going to do is make sure that this back slightly overlaps where the flap is attached to the front, just to make things a little bit tidier. I didn't particularly aim for that when I made the first one, but by luck it worked that way and I realised afterwards that that seemed to work. And that means I need to trim this back piece down by a couple of centimetres, so I'll work out where that goes and put a mark. So there's my pencil mark. I'm going to take just bravely, speedily, a couple of centimetres off. And that is the really hard work done. That is the construction done. What I'm going to do is move on to playtime decoration, having a go at adding colour, adding some little bits that make this feel like it's our own. Shall we have a go at that? The first thing I'm going to do is make this image more punchy. So I'm going to take a couple of watercolour pencils and just colour inside this wiggly embellishment on the front, this design. And I decided I will use a teal colour and a black. No science to it. They are from my Arteza watercolour pencil set that sits on my desk so no surprise that these are what were the ones I pulled from because they're handy. They're also watercolour which means that I can just take my time colouring between the lines and then easily get that pigment to just launch and come out and it's I think a bit easier than saying do it with watercolour paint. Another thing about this is I can be perhaps a bit more controlled with the amount of water I add because I don't want the paper to go fluty. So then what I'm going to do when I have added my pencil is add my little art deco features here. So I thought I would have a play with my Artistro paint marker pen for the first time, really just having a bit of a play. So let me have a go at that and then on top of it I'm going to do a few splats of paint. This colour is called 
ocean blue and I do think it goes extremely well with the colour of this background page, of this background paper. I also felt that not only do I want to add something that makes a digital paper a bit more my own, a bit more, well two things, a bit more reflective of what I feel this project is about, but also I think it's really fun to take digital papers and then just add another layer on top. Make it your own and also, biggest tip, make sure you know what you've got. So one of the things I'm doing at the moment is trying to be really a bit more organised when it comes to filing any of my digital papers. It's easy to forget what you've got. I don't know what filing system you have, but one of the most important things I think is to know what you've got and make best use of it. So what's really important, I guess, is to have a, an electronic filing system, which means it's easy to know what you've got um, and certainly to avoid buying the same thing twice. And I do wonder if anyone has ever done that. Let me know. I've also found that if you sit your paper on a hard surface like this desk, you can get the paper to just pick up a little bit more of the lead in the pencil, so of the colour. So it's going to be a bit more black when I add water. When I did this one, you can see it's just a little bit, maybe see it's just a little bit of a softer colour. It's nice to explore and learn a few new things. Right, so that is the teal and the black that I want on this added. I'm going to take a little bit of water and just bring that to life. And I don't want a huge amount of water. I'm just going to go over my water colour pencil and touching the pigment will just bring out that colour. And I should probably say um, Barbara just did want me to mention that these papers are actually the result of a collaboration of art that she's been doing and I will leave the details about her collaboration partner in the description box below. So Barbara very very kindly pointed out that this was not a collection that she put together herself so I do want to make that credit really clear. Okay, I've got a blob here but I'm not bothered because I think that actually goes with remarkably the, the paint splats in the image and I'm going to add a few more myself anyway. But this is now ready to have some of my white art deco lines and dots added. So I think although it's not quite dry, I will be a bit daring and see if I can add those next. So this is an acrylic pen and the reason I like it, it says Artistro Paint Marker Pen. I've chosen to use the one in white, number two. It's quick drying, which is good, water-based. But the reason I like it is the fine point. So I can do that much more with it. You can see how fine that is. And it came from a set that I was very kindly sent with 30 in it. And I think what's really helpful is you can see all the colors. It's an upright box, so it's space sufficient again. Here we go, 30 colours. What have we got? We've got a key on the back, which is really helpful. We've got beiges and browns. We've got neons, some regular colours, aqua, yellow, light green and pink. Really like the fact that we've got a white one and a black one in there. And I also really am keen to play with the silver, gold and bronze. So if you think about the key colours that you might want in a set, this does seem to have them. Fine tip perfect for some of our projects, for borders, for enhancing. So let's just have a little play at adding that white. No formula here, I just thought dots and lines were kind of art deco. I'm not sure if they are, but this is what I'm adding. Will that do? I think that's enough. I'm moving on to decorate the back now and I'm going to add these complementary colours of green and teal 
to match the front and I'm going to have a play with something that's a little bit botanical. So this is really a shrunken version of the backing that I used on some recent little journaling cards that I did with these cute birds. So I made a substrate with book pages and painted behind so that I could add just a little bit of embellishment and I felt that just shrinking this design and maybe adapting the colours a little bit would work really well. So again this is part of making this feel like our own, for me, making the best of a digi but also adding to it in our own way. So I will freehand, I'm not going to add any pencil marks of any type. Let me find the right page, there we go. I think about just over half of this is about the right amount that I want to fill in so that I can add a bit of a pocket on the right hand side. So I'm taking a small brush to begin with, I'll paint the stalks and then maybe I'll go in with something a bit smaller and add something in blue. And I'm using my Arteza set of watercolours. I really love these. You can tell how mucky they are from my use. I find them easy to mix. I don't know much about painting at all and I don't really care actually. I, I just like dipping my brush in. It's creamy and there's lots of pigment. I feel like I can control it. There's not too many colours. I pretty much use them all. I love the greens and this is a project where we can really make use of those beautiful greens and teals. Let's have something dramatic. Let's Let's go for some, for some sweeps. I think I'll add all of my all of my sweeps to begin with. And my stalks, a bit more there. Why don't we have something else coming through and fill in this space that could go there. So I've got probably enough going on, do you think? Shall we have something going the opposite way? So I've got my stalks. Let's add in a blue, get a blue going, maybe mix a few of these. Let's have some fun. Let's just work up the stalks quickly. ka -ching. like that. Press down, come off. Press down, come off. Press down, come off. That probably seems to be the best way of working. Touch and come off, touch and come off, squidge, touch and come off. There we go, like that. Smaller at the top, in a few different directions to give them some life. I've had these watercolours several years now, and to be frank, there's several more years use in them, and I do use them quite a bit. Just love it. Don't concentrate too much, just go for it. Let's do some little ones at the top. Are we looking okay? What do you think? I found this the other day when I was playing. If I go back in with something very yellow and just add a little bit of extra to my plant stalk, try and follow the line, does not need to be perfectly on top. It just sort of lifts it. Where's my water gone? It just lifts that picture, gives it another dimension, like this. Brings it more to life and gives us that sort of springy summer feel. And I think I'm going to add a little bit just on the bottom so that my, my plants are sitting in something. Take a very dilute version of my yellow. I'm just going to add to some of my leaves, just to make them a little bit more interesting. Just going over them. Not even being accurate. A bit more of the yellow. Be confident. Play. This is yours. Go around. Add a few stalks. I've dried it off with a heat gun. Pretty much dry. And I'm going to go back in now with a black pen and just add some scratchy lines to add a bit of definition to my little botanical piece down here. So this again is also a 
an activity that doesn't require much skill at all. So all I'm doing is thinking what shape of leaf does each one of these look like? Where would I think I'd want a little bit of a vein and an edge of a leaf and going for it really quickly. And I've got the blend of those teal colours and the little bits of yellowy green that we added at the end. Let's give it a sweep. Sweep up here and really incredibly scratchy but fun. And again I used this when I made those bird tags and I've been using it on a number of those different projects when I stick book pages together and I add something I just think getting your pen out and having the confidence to scribble on it just adds that little bit extra. And what I want to do at this stage is just add a little bit of context in the form of some splats. I can see in the paper these lovely gold colours, so in her hair, and there's gold in the design of the paper, some very pale beige splats. So I, so I decided that it would be fun to add a bit more of my own. So I'm going to use, because I've got it, Shocking Lime Green Arteza Acrylic Colours, which I've used before on butterfly wings because it comes out really, really lightweight but still has that iridescence. I'm going to add quite a lot of water and the least technical activity of the day is this. I'll go all the way over to the right as well, even though I'm going to cover some of that up. We can have the one-handed splat and the Olympic level double-handed splat. Just like that. I'm taking my front and I'm going to do exactly the same. One-handed splat. And you seem to get different size dots if you do it in a few different ways. Maybe in a different direction too. And I think what I will do is also make use of a bit of that green that's sitting there left over. The inspiration for this envelope pouch came from a video I watched on a channel called Junk Journal Joy and I know that she also has a lovely Instagram page so do check out her channel and take a look at not only the video where she makes her envelope pouch I think for Happy Mail but also several of her other videos because I think she's got some really great ideas on her channel. For the next step I want to add something to the right hand side here so I'm going to take a really simple pocket and just add some of the decorative element, the decorative elements that are in the digi kit. So this was the page that I thought I would use and I thought I would take the same lady that appears on the front embedded within the teal design and somehow attach that to a pocket. So why don't I cut that out and I think what I'll do, I've chosen a few just grabbed a few of my little pockets that I sit making from time to time. I think I need a largish one. That would work. I think I'll use one of these as my basic pocket. If you'd like to make some really basic pockets and you want some very easy steps, I have a video on my channel. I will link it in the description box down below. I've got a video with three really easy pockets that you can make and they're kind of the staples, staple ephemera that you might want to have as a skill at your fingertips or refer back to if you want to just make some basic pockets for a junk journal spread or for your junk journal. So as I say I will leave that linked in the description box down below. On the one I made as a practice run, I did sew around it with a zigzag, but I actually think with this one, I'm just going to glue it on and do some faux stitching. I feel that that will be enough. And I've just used a book page to make 
a basic pocket in relatively thick paper and that is just that superb what I'm going to do is just trim off the corners so that the whole thing looks coordinated I'm just going to add some faux stitching in a dark brown and as I'm sitting here doing this I know that I want to add more embellishment to this maybe something sparkly but I also know I have to stop at some point anyway there's the pocket and that will go on the right hand side of our back and I'm going to add a basic embellishment on the left hand side what should we have from the Andrea pot oh I've got one cut out follow your heart, perfect I think that can go under there leave a bit of a gap at the edges so don't add glue absolutely everywhere and then I can tuck my sentiment underneath so how about there how about there with enough space to sew around but also space at the top so that there's peeping space for a tag it's all coming together it's so much fun this and you get a really big and substantial project at the end of it and for me this is a bit different and I just feel like I'm making really great use of these digital papers which are refreshing the art deco style is something I don't know much about so I'm really looking forward to playing with this kit some more and seeing how I can use it and then integrate it into my other projects so now I have the back done it's time to sew the two pieces together I'm going to sew around it and I'll show you exactly where and how and then I'll add my final little butterflies and we'll have a look at the finished object so I've set up my sewing machine and what I'm going to do is with a running stitch not the smallest one and I happen to have some deep green thread on my sewing machine I'm going to sew around starting at the top right here and just do three sides and then I'm going to do the same thing again and the decision you have at this stage is whether you have the back as the tidy side with the, the reverse, effectively the front of your envelope showing the more messy stitches as they are on my sewing machine or if you want this to be the tidy side and then I'm going to sew around the flap so I'll go across the top just inside the fold so you'll see a line across here and then I'm going to go around the flap and obviously on the flap I thought it probably made sense to, for the tidy side of stitches to be the ones that are visible that's something for me to think about I think I got it wrong at the top here on my little sample and then the final row is across the top but within the front so you'll have a nice neat row across here so I'll just have a go at getting on with that and then we'll see how it looks and we're on the home straight. So I've sewn around it, I used little pegs to hold the back to the front as I sewed. I've still got a little bit of buckle here so it's not perfect, I'm a beginner sewer but I'm really pleased with how it's gone. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of an eyelet in that flap so I'll measure the middle which is at 11 a tiny mark. I'll take my new toy, my crocodile, and I will see how far in shall we go. I'll go quite a long way in, just there, and I will choose a little eyelet. What should we have? Maybe the rose gold is that sort of art deco feel. Push that through, take my crocodile. Clamp it together, a bit of crunch, and I do think that gives it a little bit of a finish. I'm going to steal a tag, just a handmade tag with some little bits of paint that I've made at some point, and that can go in there. I'll add a couple of butterflies that also come from the kit, one there, keep the wings up. Where shall this one go? Where do you want it? Tell me. Where do you want this one to go? How about somewhere? Is that okay? Should we put it there? 
and this is my large envelope pouch in an Art Deco style. Check out Barbara's channel 49 Dragonflies for more ideas on how to use this kit because I think it's so much fun and it's really beautiful. I think you'd really enjoy that. I hope you've enjoyed seeing me make this. If you have then check out my video where I make those bird journaling tags. Again using book pages, a little bit of glue, some paint, some collage. They were a lot of fun as well. I hope you've enjoyed this and I really hope to see you soon.